The death of the arcade in this day and age has brought about an interesting side effect. The days of notoriously hard quarter eating games are long gone, as are the sticky floors and drug dealers, but now we're beginning to see developers try to recapture the charm of old arcade games. An interesting example of this is Hammerwatch, a game that surprisingly fell under the gaming radar. Developed by Joachim Skoglund and Nicholas Meyerberg, Hammerwatch is a 2D isometric adventure game where you play as one of four classes adventuring in a classical medieval dungeon seeking treasure and slaying dangerous monsters inside. If the game sounds strikingly familiar, Hammerwatch is actually heavily inspired from the old Gauntlet arcade games from days gone by. The main question is, will this game model hold up in the modern day? Hammerwatch's gameplay does take a lot from the basic model of Gauntlet. You start your class off with a basic attack and one special skill to complement the class. Paladins are your typical tank and spank unit with high attack speed, a shield to deflect bullets, and several skills focused on keeping yourself and others alive. The Ranger is your damage engine, with a long-range piercing attack and skills that cover various areas in damage. The basic mage is focused around fire, with a basic chargeable fire attack and a variety of fire carpet bombs at the cost of low maximum HP. The Warlock conversely has his own version of lightning area attacks, but suffers at melee with a short knife range attack. After choosing your class, the game starts you off in the deepest depths of a dungeon as you fight and loot your way out of the various castle floors and gross amount of enemy waves. Now while Hammer Watch does take a lot of notes from Gauntlet, it also does its own thing to establish itself as a homage rather than a copycat. For one, Hammer Watch introduces a character growth system that involves spending money at trainers to improve stats and skills. Since everything requires money to improve or purchase, treasure hunting becomes vital to advance rather than a meaningless tasks. The dungeons never have enough cash to fully improve your character either, so this adds an element of uniqueness when you're allowed to build how you want but can't be all powerful. Dungeons all have some interesting puzzles or outrageous traps that break up the tedium of combat, and also add an element of danger for players that are not paying attention. Each dungeon area also has one or two bonus dungeons that pays homage to Gauntlet, which is really charming and adds a semblance of extra fun to the game. There's also local and online co-op if you want to play with friends. Everything comes together in a way that allows Hammer Watch to emulate that old arcade experience in the modern day right at your home. Though the game does a lot of cool things to bring about the arcade experience, it also carries some design flaws in the gameplay. For one, the game has a live system. While the live system alone isn't a bad mechanic, in co-op lives are shared, and there's a death counter. This is a big problem because if you're doing online co-op, some traps and mobs can cause problems for players with lag, resulting in lives being eaten like candy. It also doesn't help that there isn't a continue system, and you're dependent on reloading a save and re-hosting if you want a co-op. This could get really tedious initially, and can possibly turn back players at the beginning. You can buy lives later on, but at that point you're already halfway through the game and skills are getting much more expensive. On the note of the save system, Hammer Watches is really shaky. The game relies on checkpoints that are autosaves, but there's no stacking log of autosaves. Instead, there's only one save per playthrough. Save scoving certainly is a problem in gaming, but if you're going to have a hard game over scenario, then don't make a save system that can put the player in a corner without any chance to progress. Finally, the game is very unforgiving towards single player. The game is built for multiplayer, which is nice if you have friends, but becomes problematic if you plan solo. Mobs are still huge, but you lack the coordination and the manpower of your friends, so each mob becomes a task of kite until the mob is whittled down. This becomes a huge problem because per the Gauntlet Credo, you'll be fighting a lot of mobs, which will dull the single player experience. These scenarios certainly evoke the arcade experience, but the combination of those ideals and modern gaming standards could potentially put the player in a very awkward position. The game's engine is peculiar at times, too. The game is rendered in a high-resolution pixel art style, and it handles the art in stride. Each dungeon area is very well detailed, and despite the character and enemy's small size, the models all have distinct designs and alternate colors for the players. The music is very generic fantasy adventure chords, and while this isn't bad, the music itself isn't built to loop. This often leads to music abruptly stopping without a fade-out and looping back to the beginning or going to a new song without transition. The game has pad support for the 360, PS3, and assorted PC brand controllers along with the option to rebind. Keyboard mouse controls, however, are initially confounding, so you may need to rebind those controls. The game engine itself is the main issue. For a seemingly low-profile game, it uses an unusual amount of memory and processing power. The game also has problems dealing with older operating systems, oftentimes crashing on anything at or below Windows Vista. 
The netcode for this game is weird in that the lobby system's private function doesn't actually make your game private, which can make starting a co-op romp with your friends somewhat troublesome. The game also has a game creator engine which could add longevity to the game, but it's going to require some effort from what little community the game has so far. Overall, the engine may look good, but it's handled somewhat clumsily and can be problematic for some customers. Hammerwatch certainly is an interesting entity in this day and age. It shows that the old arcade style of merciless games can work in a modern setting, but some other mechanics are certainly looking obsolete. As much as I enjoyed the game, I can only recommend Hammerwatch if you have a good group of friends. It feels like a weekend party game, just get your bros together and enjoy a fun arcade experience and have a grand time. Don't get this game if you're expecting a good single player experience. It's certainly the kind of game that will feast on your quarters.